talent. Mm. I mean, unfortunately for Paul and I, the problem we had was the was the size of the wallet we brought. It wasn't quite big <laughs> enough, and so <laughs> and so when you when you're asking questions about young players, you know, they would just look at you and go, "No, you can't touch that. You can't touch that. You can't touch that." I mean, so we were. We were kind of we, the mistake we made was going to the wrong places. We we should have gone to a level where we might have got somebody, mm-hmm. because MLS, with all due respect, even for Brazilians who 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 want to get out of wherever they are, you know, they're, they're looking higher than that. And so that was the mistake we made. But as far as looking at talent, I mean, Paul and I came away. A little disgruntled, to be honest, because there was so much of it that we could have, we could have, we could have got some team sheets, shut our eyes, thrown a dart, <laughs> and we could have got a player who would have been so good for us, but we just couldn't afford them, and that's and that's that's the problem that the majority of scouts, coaches that go down there have is because there is so much talent that unless you've got the money to back it up, you ain't getting close to it. Mm. But as I said, as far as, far as you know, apart from seeing the police, um, to be able to go <laughs> and watch young players whose desi- the desire is incredible. You know, you're talking about Gabriel cleaning Hendrick out, and that's at the very highest level. Well, these kids, the desire and the way they trained, I mean, this was like electric from the first minute of training to the last second of training, never mind the games. The, you could see the desire and the look in these kids' faces. I mean... It was so enjoyable to watch because if there's one thing there's not enough of, in, in my opinion, and, and a lot of the youngsters here, is that that de- desire and determination to be the best. They all want to be the best player that's ever lived. They don't just want to be professional players. They want to be the best. It's great to watch. Tim, when Hendrik goes to Real Madrid, he's got Vinny Jr., he's got Rodrigo, but he's also got Jude Bellingham, who's only 20 as well. Will it be a seamless transition for him? Probably not, no. Uh, and uh, I, I think he'll he'll be brought along slowly, and that 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 that's the way to do it. Yeah. Uh, and one of the advantages of a squad like that is you're not putting too much on him straight away. Let him bet in. I mean, someone who's uh, who who will join the club at eighteen clearly has time on his side. Stevie, this has been a bit of a love fest for for the the, the young talent and looking ahead and Jude Bellingham and all these Brazilians. It's time to throw a curveball, time to throw a spanner in the works. Not all Brazilians are good. There was a player at Celtic. Now, I've got to be careful here. Raphael, (laughs) I'm going to say Shaid. A bit of a blanket statement. (laughs) Kenny Douglas signed him for $5 million for Gremio. He got three Brazilian caps. And it's S-C-H-E-I-D-T. The pronunciation in Glasgow, Tim... (laughs) <laughs> was not shy because I tried to commentate on him. Yeah. Um, he wasn't very good, was he? Well, and people still remember, and uh, <laughs> I did say this in a previous century that I thought he'd, he'd be all right. He could he could play, but what he yeah. couldn't do. Th- 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 this gets to the heart of, of of the thing about being good in certain positions. Brazilian defensive lines, still to this day, they play very deep, mm-hmm. very deep. So there's lots of space on the field. That's one of the reasons why Brazil is producing so many strikers in wide spaces at the moment, because those strikers have acceleration room, able to, to, to show their stuff. The centre-backs, all of Brazil's, and Brazil is producing good centre-backs, but all of them are developing outside Brazil. And that even goes back to, say, Thiago Silva. When Thiago Silva... Uh, went to, to Milan, he couldn't play for the first few months because they had uh, too many um, non-European community players. So I think they just worked with him on, on playing higher up the field because even with someone of his pace at his peak, when he was back in Brazil, he would sit almost on, on top of his of his goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Someone like Rafael Scheidt, in Brazilian football, he could do that because he's slow. The ball behind, it's the goalkeepers. And he could play out constructively off both feet uh, he, he could dominate the space in front of him, but you take him over to Europe, you 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 make him play thirty yards higher up the field, and the football is faster and more furious and, any, and more intense than anything he's used to. Absolutely lost. Uh, so th- that's the reason why all of the good Brazilian centre backs now are developing outside the country 
And there are some centre backs playing in in full time in f- big clubs, first division mm-hmm. football in Brazil. You think, how on earth is this player a first division player? Um, full backs has become another problem position, really, because you now the Brazilian full back was a little bit like Steven Nickel on on Mirandinha's mm-hmm. debut for Newcastle, the first Brazilian player to play. You know, so that he ran into Steven Nickel from full back, who was the hat trick <laughs> hero. Brazilian player at full backs were wingers. Now they've got the wingers back. They've got lots and lots of wingers. So what does that mean for the fullback? What does the what does the fullback have to do? So there's not a lot of, of young fullbacks coming through at the moment while Brazil sorts out what a fullback is. So that there's, there's, a, there's a kind of unevenness in this talent, although I think you'd expect most of the list to be strikers because strikers mature yeah. more early, it's less of a collective endeavour, and it's also what the market wants. I'm going to finish with a game in just a second, a top five game, but top five of the worst, and I'm going to give you the five in a second. Before that, Mirandinha's debut, Stevie Nicol. That game was on a Sunday. You missed a family wedding to score a hat-trick instead, didn't you, against uh, Newcastle? I did. I was supposed to give my twin sister away that day, and the game got switched to live TV, and so unfortunately... (laughs) <laughs> My sister had to look elsewhere. <laughs> the only reason I know that, Tim, it's in his book. It's a good read. You should try it. Um, okay, your top five. I've already read the best ones that are up and coming, led by Endrick. I'm going to give you five, and you've got it in no particular order. Yeah. You've got to put them in the um, worst to not as bad. Okay, this, is a, bit, mentioned... this, is, this is a bit like expected goals. It, it's, it's transforming everything yeah, in statistics, nonsense. isn't it? Don't right. ask Stevie about expected goals. Okay, yeah, here exactly. we go. The five in any order. Alfonso Alves of Middlesbrough. Two goals against Man United in his fifth appearance for Borra is probably as good as it got. Andre Santos, Arsenal. Best remembered for asking Robin Van Persie for his jersey at halftime at Old Trafford. That's a no-no. Kerlon. He's still Mm. known as the seal dribbler because he could dribble the ball in his head. Nothing to do with the fact he was rubbish at at Ajax or Inter. Danielson, remember when Real Betis broke the world transfer record to sign him from Sao Paulo? And Kleberson, a World Cup winner in 2002, but Man United fans, they don't remember his time at Old Trafford as well. Okay, what's your five in which order? Well, number one, the best, has to be Danielson. And he, he, he was... Uh... He has a World Cup winner's medal. They're not, they're not giving away at Sweetie Shops. Uh, and Betis paid over the odds for him, and it put too much pressure on him. And how often do wingers carry teams? You know, wingers don't carry, especially 20-year-old wingers don't carry teams. So it, it, was a, it was a flashy mistake from Betis that put too much pressure on him. But I think he, 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 had, a, he had a good career. Uh, two would, would be Cleverson, who uh, never again achieved the level of performance that we saw in, in the 2002 World Cup. Partly that might be personal characteristics. Also, I think at that World Cup, everyone who played the European season was a busted flush. He was in the middle of the Brazilian season and he had a physical advantage that uh, that he really made tell. So I think perhaps that, that, that competition put him on a level that he wasn't really up for. Mm-hmm. Um, but he, he, had a, he went to the 2010 World Cup as well. Uh, and he had two feet, and and, and he was mobile, and he, and he had a he had a reasonable career. Um, three, I'm going to go with well, Alfonso Alves scored a lot of goals in Holland. He did uh, for him, Ben. Yep. Yes, I, I never like it when when players are attacked for not coming off at a certain at certain club or whatever. I never like that because, you know, he did he did well enough at other clubs to get the opportunity to, to go to, to to Middlesbrough. Mm-hmm. Four will be will be. Andre Santos, who was the kind of fullback that Brazil was producing at that time. He had a nice left foot, um, but he, he really wasn't, wasn't a great defender. And five, I'll go, Kurt, and Curlon was so unfortunate. And, and this, this, is, this is the big problem with doing lists of young talents. Because Curlon, he got famous for this seal dribble, but he was a complete package mm-hmm. at under-17 level, which can be a treacherous, treacherous level. Under-20 is much, much more reliable than under-17. But he had his ankle absolutely smashed, and he was never the same player again. So uh, that that wasn't any lack of talent or desire; it was just the misfortune to suffer an injury that seriously undermined him as a football player. And that that has to be a cautionary tale for any young player. It can all go wrong in a moment. Yeah. Stevie, final thoughts. 
It's a bit of a sad note to end on, but at the end of the day, that's the truth. You know, we can talk about all the talent and you were talking about Bellingham and everybody else, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's it can it can change that quickly. You're, you're mm. one bad injury away from from have, not having a career. So, yeah, a, bit, a very sombre ending, I should say. Do you want to tell us a joke then? Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you what. When we went... Well, I signed a Brazilian at the New England Revolution. Okay. And I remember the president, Sino Galati, coming up to me after he made his debut. He said, you know what? You've got some talent, haven't you? I said, what do you mean? He goes, you're the only person that can go to Brazil and find the one player that can't kick a ball. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, thanks, Sino. <laughs> That'll do us a nice way to end it. <laughs>